Hi, and welcome to Robin's house. I wanted to do a, a little video today about this cute little sweet hummingbird stamp set. Uh, if you choose to purchase the stamp set, it's this cute little one with two hummingbirds and some, I don't know, hummingbird flowers. It comes with uh, thin cuts or not with thin cuts, but if you choose to purchase it, you can get my Cards with Robin kit for $5. And today I wanted to go over one of these cards because this paneling technique is so fun that I wanted to show you how to do it. So the first thing, so you can see that it's made out of a square. And so I happen to have a cheetah punch that was about the size of a square that seemed reasonable. So I just make my square and then you get your the paper that you want to work in and a light colored ink and I chose pebble. I did try it with, with the pewter. I didn't care for that at all. So it must be the, the light colors that work. So first thing you do is you set your your square somewhere. It doesn't have to be centered and it probably shouldn't be centered, but I found that the easiest way to work. So you ink up your sponge and you wanna have the preponderance of the ink in that bottom corner, but you wanna have at least a little something in each of those other bottom uh, side corners, I guess, because you'll need that later, but just Make sure the others, and then you move on. So you've got your half square that goes all the way up to the top corner so that when you go to do your next square, it magically lines up right there. You just work your way. Down is the easiest. Up is a little more difficult in that you have to guess a little bit but hopefully you left yourself some marks here in the corners. So I, uh, when you're doing this, if you do more than about, well, around one, one or two cards and the back side of this template will start to bleed. So if you're doing many of these, you might want to get extra templates. And like I said, the upper ones are the trickiest because you only can kind of guess where you were. So I kind of go here and then just drag it upwards. And this is probably shaking the camera a bunch and sorry about that. And then again with this one, I would just take it and then it probably stops around there. If you do start it in a logical place, you can see that this one cuts right across the top. And that's because I started with my point along the top, so it would make sense that this would happen. The other thing that I tried while doing this is using our sponge daubers. I thought that it would make this a lot easier and it did not. The roundness, I'm not very fluent in sponge daubers in the first place, so it could have been a not very fair trial. But when I did it, I found that the roundness stayed with it. And so if that's a look that you want, then by all means use the sponge daubers, but, but I found that this produced a softer, a softer look. 
And then in addition to that, this was me trying it with the pewter. And the pewter was just so dark that it, it, it just did too much. So we can put this aside. And I wanted to show you the technique of the coloring. So the, the leaves are pretty, I wonder if we can make this go down. So anyway, so hopefully that's a little closer. Um, so when you're doing the background, like the leaves, I just do them quick and then I'll go back over them and add a little extra shadow to them. But you can see how quickly the leaves can get colored. And I, um, I don't think you have to spend the time to make sure every single smack roll is covered because I think that the ink kind of seeps its way to the, that black border. And I don't want to put so much ink in there that it passes the border and goes beyond. And then so I'll just go back through where the the stamp set has added a little bit of shadow and I will add some as well. Because mar alcohol markers are nice in that if you want a darker color, just color it one more time. And then you can get your greenery finished. And then for the purple parts, I use this medium purple. Well, I might have used the light purple. One of the nice things about the alcohol markers is if you color too dark, you can actually take the lighter color and lighten it up. Like I just did, you can't even tell that there was a darker color right there. Now I am by no means a, uh, a very good colorer. There are tons of YouTube videos um, that you can learn from, from experts. I'm more of a fast and easy colorer. But the way that these color, um, these flowers looked best was having a little bit of lighter color on the outer pieces of the flower probably for that's where the light was shining so when I go over them again I will keep my coloring to the middle sections and blend in there so that when they the colors dry you will have a, a lighter one a lighter colors on the outsides of the flower. And of course the bottom is always sh more shadowed than the, the underside is more shadowed than the above side. So I find it's enough time to let it dry just by starting on the top and going down and then if I want to go darker again just go one more time once you're finished with the the original ones and then I don't bring that line up quite as high as those other lines and then that provides a little bit of shadowing more than just coloring it once so then I can bring it back up hopefully Okay, so then it's time to put together the card. 
So the first thing I need to do is attach this to this purple base. So I've done that. And now it's time to add our images and the gems. So since it's that time, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down so that when it's time to finish the card, I don't have to have all the 3D items uh, and fight with those. Okay. So now I know that I'm gonna need some flowers and my hummingbird, which I have already put the foam squares on the back of. And you kind of lay those out to how you want it to be. And that will tell you where the gems should go. So you can see that on this one, I'm writing the lines. So I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit when I glue it down. That way I'll have room for my little gem. And then my hummingbird can be hovering maybe a little bit further. So I have a gem. And then if you have uh, some crisscrosses, you see that my, my things didn't quite add up. So if you put a, a gem over the top, haha, <laughs> now you can't even tell. Take my foam squares off the hummingbird. There we go. And then I just need to add another gem over here. Another gem up here. And there you go, all finished. What a beautiful card, such a fun technique too. Well, thank you very much for joining Create at Robin's House to make fun cards today. I hope you have a great day. Happy crafting.